dangerous is sexual empowerment? My muse for this topic is Nina Richards from the hit series on Prime Video, Riches. Nina is a liberated woman. She has casual sex partners. She's unashamed of her sexual needs and she's thoroughly uncommitted to these men. <laughs> There's always a sense of power when you watch women like Nina. Women who own sexual command and authority. Women who do not apologize for having sex or negotiate with society regarding their sexual rights. The idea of sexual empowerment is that women like sex, they enjoy sex, and have sexual needs just as men do. Also, women should have the same sexual freedom as men. It seems like a pretty straightforward idea, but is it? The world of Nina Richards is affluent and removed from the wild judgmental society a lot of black women, especially in third world countries, face. Nina Richards can choose to pick a guy from a bar, have sex and move on without any form of commitment and may not have her entire life stripped of dignity for this act. But we know of women in poor communities who are shamed and disgraced for daring to explore their sexual needs. I'm not even talking about prostitution. I am talking about older women who satisfy their sexual needs and when they are caught, they are paraded in the community for shame. I am talking about divorced women who are shamed for wanting to find love again and experience sex again. I am talking about how disgusted society sounds when women verbalize their sexual needs. There are institutions that demand chastity from women and deny them their right for not wanting to live out this ridiculous standard of modesty that is largely built on misogyny. So how safe is it for black women in Africa to practice sexual liberty? Personally, I do not preach sexual empowerment and there are reasons for this. To a large extent, I agree that women should match the energy of patriarchy and get what they want from life. Women should be unashamed. Women should fight for equality and so on. The general feminist movement is very important. Now, let's narrow it to sex for heterosexual women. This podcast is specific to women who are attracted to men. Women have been the focal point of empowerment. For centuries, women have been relegated to inferior positions. And so when the world woke up, it realized it was ignoring and have been unfair to half the world's population. So there's a lot of compensation women deserve. And so when people complain that, oh, they are focusing too much on girl empowerment, well, there's a reason for that. <laughs> the world is simply trying to make up for relegating half the population to chores. If it is doing a good job at it, that is another discussion entirely. African societies, however, insist that women have always been equal to most men, occupying important and superior positions in communities. But then religion was introduced by colonialism and let's just say we are yet to recover from it. To a large extent, there's a lot of catching up for women and girls. And that is the reason special days and attention are paid to the girl child. This laudable mission has left something behind or someone behind. And it is a boy child, men. Every conversation focuses on women for rebuke, for shame, or for uplifting. Everywhere you turn, there is a conference or a conversation or a prayer meeting for women. Elaborate occasions are built around the need to enlighten and provide for the girl child. So whatever knowledge the girl child is receiving, I do not think the boy child is exposed to this new knowledge. There is a gap between what we feed the girl child regarding equality and what the boy child understands. Sometimes it feels like the boy child is stuck 
in an extinct era and finding it hard to navigate these new conversations that require a lot of unlearning. Sex is also part of the conversation that isn't getting through to boys like it should. We are still in a society where boys gang up to sexually harass young girls after Wayek or Neko. Girls they have shared classrooms with for years. These people become monsters and then resolve to rape the girls after the last paper in school. I have heard of this practice even when I was a child and to think it is still happening now shows that the world is moving and has forgotten to take the boys along. These boys become men, men without new knowledge and a lot of angst, almost like a ticking bomb. There's still a lot of rudimentary things that need to be addressed. The slut shaming of women after a relationship the blackmail, the idea that sex is mainly for a man's pleasure and so the narrative remains undefeated. A man who sleeps with a woman gets what he wants and the woman doesn't. Sex is still a man's reward. Sex is his spoils. If you have a society that allows men and women think like this and there are no real consequences, even when sex becomes a crime, then you must understand that practicing sex empowerment is unsafe for women. I hope you get my drift. It is important for women to be sexually liberated, but has the society prepared itself to embrace this? The answer is no. Due to classism, some women can get away and live above the general nuance of shame. But many women do not fall under this demography. And this makes the few who are liberated not exactly the right example to throw around. They may have money, status, and just come from the right environment or family that will do everything to protect them. Nina Richards falls into this category. But to expect the next woman to walk in the same liberty as someone like Nina is dangerous. She doesn't have the structure and resources to protect herself like, Lin like Nina does. I love Nina. <laughs> I love sexually empowered women. When Mo Abudu was dragged for sexual liberty, whether the story was true or false, I was glad she didn't respond. But most especially, I was very happy it didn't affect her status, her worth, her value and her business. She simply continues to soar. Same thing happened with Tiwa Savage. Her nudes were exposed, but the woman continued to succeed and bag high-profile endorsements. Some say, it's girl power. <laughs> if men can get away with sex, women should be able to get away with it too. It's that simple. But as much as we celebrate the Ninas and the Tiwas of this world, we must consider the unempowered woman who needs this message. But most importantly, need to understand not to copy and paste the reality of another woman who has what it takes to walk in liberty. My advice would be this. Walk within your own power. Overcome what you can. Learn what you can. Experiment. But most importantly, judge society without bias so you can be certain you are within your safety at all times. Yes.